<laughs> What's up, John? Pete, how you doing? Good. Good. <laughs> Pete, when you're in this process um, and you're you're not face to face with players and not hands on, how beneficial is it, I guess, for you that you pretty much have a veteran offense that, yeah, you'd like to have them there, but you know there are some things that maybe you can do virtually, like you guys have been doing, and you don't necessarily have to have them there. Yeah, I, I think. Uh... You know, to start out, there's, there's probably no substitute for, you know, being, you know, face-to-face -face in contact with them. But I think that uh, this virtual off-season for us has been very, uh, very successful. And obviously, like you said, having a veteran team, um, that makes this, this process a lot, uh, a lot smoother for us. But as far as the virtual meetings go, I, I think that they've been real detailed for us. And, um, you know, I've had an opportunity to jump on and listen to all the position coaches as they're going through. and. Um, you know, the thing that I find on those meetings is, is you're not necessarily having to hustle to get through wherever you finish for the day, you get through your slotted time and it's like, Hey, we'll just pick up there tomorrow. So it's, it's not like, ah, you're trying to get through the last three or four plays in, in, in two minutes so you can hustle out to the, uh, to the field. So uh, again, no substitute for, you know, being face to face with them and in the same room and, and having a chance to go out and work those, um, you know, some of those plays against different defenses. But again, it's, it's, it's been a real success for us, I believe. You know, I know we've asked several coaches, this, but do you feel like some of these elements will carry over to the future? Um, yeah, I think that, um, I think there'll probably be discussions in the future as a staff going forward with Sean and just kind of some of the, the benefits that we, we do see with it. Um, you know, for us as, as coaches, the one thing that's been nice for us is, um, now that we have these these WebEx Zoom type meetings, is it also gives us opportunities to maybe meet with some coaches around, uh, you know, in college football as well. It's it's maybe you don't have to travel there to see these guys, and uh, an opportunity to talk to some different staffs and and and, and learn some things. You know, I know we asked DA this, but for you, has it been more, um, I guess, tightening up things that you wanted to emphasize, or has it been a little bit more install? Uh, I think it's been a combination of both. I think that, um, uh, you know, at the end of every season, you obviously go through your, your cut-ups as a staff, and we had the opportunity to do that before um, we were out of the offices. And then being able to go that through that with your players, um, going through with your staff to tighten up the details. Uh, but with the players, it, a lot of that's been install, going through the paper, and then uh, also have an opportunity, all the videos accessible to us. So, Again, there, what, what usually goes on in the classroom, other than being face-to-face, -face, we're able to handle all that with the virtual meetings. Does it set you back, I guess, any with, with the manual? You get a new piece, you want to integrate that new piece. Uh, you know some of the things that new piece can do, but you're not having them on the field to integrate. Well, obviously, he has uh, you know, experience, and he, you know, he brings some leadership to that group as well. Um, the nice thing about him is, is uh, we feel like he's a good learner. We, we kind of have a vision for what we're going to do with him. Uh, we'll be able to play him inside and outside. Uh, but again, there's, there's no substitute for getting the on-field work, him hearing the different terminology probably. Uh, you know, we're installing plays that he's, some plays that he's probably familiar with and he's done before, but it's just, you know, a little bit of a different terminology. And then also being able to work with Drew on the field. Hey Pete, regarding Emmanuel specifically, um, I can't remember if it was RC or, or CJ who said it the other day, but uh, like the, the stuff he did in San Francisco wasn't necessarily a lot of stuff that, that he will be doing here. Do you guys have to kind of look back at, at stuff he did in Denver to kind of project how he would uh, kind of fit in your offense? I, I think this, I think that Terry Fontenot and his group do such a great job. And, and one thing that Sean makes us do is, is, you know, when we're looking at free agents, um, we've at least as an offense and a defense uh, kind of given our vision of what we're looking for in players as far as what, you know, some of the characteristics that we look for. And so I think that, um, you know, I think when he gets here, we kind of have a vision for what he'll be. Again, like I said, he'll be able to play inside and outside. Um, and then, you know, obviously there are some differences between maybe what he's been doing as of late to going back to a few years ago. But um, again, one thing that Sean is, is really big on, and you guys all know this already, is, is that we're making sure we're putting those guys in the position where they can be successful and do the things that they can be successful at. 
Sean had uh, mentioned that you guys were looking at um, dialing back Drew's snaps also on, on Thursdays. If, if you guys do that, does that help a lot with being able to evaluate Jameis and, and teach him some things and kind of find out really what you have in that room? I think this. I think again, you know, just like the since I've been here, I love you know I love the room that we got, and then uh, dialing back some Drew some reps. I think that's going to be a good opportunity for both Taysom and Jameis as we get into the uh, training camp and 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 getting those guys opportunities to get some reps with the one. So you're going to see uh, those guys mixing around. And uh, again, I do think it is beneficial for those guys to have reps with everybody. And, and when you look at Jameis, do you, do you see a lot of stuff that, you know, fixable in, in a short period of time that you can, you know, maybe just taking a step back will, will help him with? Well, I think this, I think that um, he's a talented football player and, you know, he's, he's done a lot of great things in this league already. Um, and we're excited to have him. The one thing I've, you know, just in these meetings that he's been, we've been having with these virtual meetings, and the one thing that stands out to me right away is that he's, he's sharp, he's smart, he asks the right questions, and so he has that experience. And then, um, you know, as a, he's got the ability. You see him throw the ball downfield. He's got excellent arm strength. So there's a lot to be excited about, and we're looking forward to working with him. When you mentioned, Pete, the, the, the meetings and the virtual meetings, obviously – some potential changes on the offensive line with, with Reeves coming in and maybe McCoy moving to another position. Just maybe, I don't think we've talked to you since the draft, the potential of, of some shifts there and then your virtual meetings maybe with Ruiz and, and understanding, you know, because you can't obviously be there with Drew if he is going to play center, just kind of how that process has been going with what he's been asking and how, you know, his development has gone since you all selected him. Well, again, there's, there's no substitute for the field work that, that we're going to get. And again, we'll have to, um, as far as, you know, one thing that Sean's already made clear to us as a coaching staff is, is that when we get back early to training camp that we're going to uh, have to, you know, ease some of these guys in. And if, and if there's, if there is issues, it's, he's not going to be looking at the players. He's going to be looking at the coaches. Um, and so just being able an opportunity to sit in on a Dan Roshar and Brendan Nugent's meeting and, and to see, um, obviously how, how smart he is. And, and we saw that in, in his college video. We really um, felt great about the player. We were excited to get him. And so, again, we look forward to working with them. Um, and, uh, you know, just excited when they do finally get here. Pete, uh, Dan Campbell talked the other day about how he thinks what we saw from Jared Cook in the second half of last season is, is just the beginning uh, of his potential in this offense. I know a lot of that had to do with injury and him getting adjusted for a while. But was there also things that you guys learned about how to use his skill set that, that you're excited to sort of advance on uh, uh, going forward? Yeah, you know, again, we were real excited when we signed him in um, free agency, uh, you know, in the year past. And uh, – and, and we saw him do a lot of good things on film. We were excited with what we saw. And again, it, it, you know, it took us a little while to get going with him during the season. And again, part of that was, you know, us just giving him those opportunities. And so the more opportunities that he got seemed to all of a sudden um, take off. And again, it's about putting him in the right spot and making sure we're doing the right things with him. So uh, part of that's on us. And uh, again, it, it is nice now that him and Drew have a year together and, and going into the system now with him. Um, in training camp and getting going early. You know, Pete, with, with Taysom taking on, I guess, a little bit more of a role as, as quarterback uh, in terms of reps and those kinds of things, how much does that affect the offense? And, and second, how much have you seen him improve as a quarterback? Well, I think there was vast improvements just from, last, uh, from the start of the season last year to what he was able to do. But, um, you know, I think the focus during training camp for us with Taysom, as it was last year, is his – Hey, he's, he's competing at the quarterback spot. And then, you know, once the season starts, he was, he's able to do so many things for us and do them, do them so, so well. And again, you know, we're trying to put our best guys on the field and, he, and he's usually one of those, those best guys for certain situations. So I think as we get into this training camp, the nice thing is, Hey, you're focusing on the quarterback spot. You're getting the reps there and, and that other stuff will come and, and, and we know what he's able to do at those spots. If I could follow up kind of what John just said, how much growth have you seen in him from when he got here, when you all claimed him from Green Bay, maybe to where he is now? Because obviously there's a lot of hype and hoopla, but we don't see what you all see every day at practice, just where he was from when you got him to where he is now in his development, in your opinion. I think there's been a, a huge strides in his development. And, um, 
you know, we have, a, we have all the confidence in him being back there and leading the team from back there. Um, and again, you know, when the season starts, he kind of gets thrown into so many different roles, but it'll be nice again, having another training camp for him. But you just saw, you know, the development of even just, um, you know, we have some lengthy play calls and as uh, he's been in the system, his ability to just to spit those out with ease and get in and out of the huddle. Um, you've just seen all those progressions and, and you know, is throwing from the pocket. And uh, obviously he's always had the ability to kind of move and make some plays on the run. But again, there, there's been, there's been development and, and we've seen. Um, uh, hey Pete, we've heard, uh, we've heard a couple guys talk now about uh, how Troutman really started kind of standing out at the, at the senior bowl. Is that, was that the case for you as well? And, and what, what kind of, what are you hoping to see out of him when training camp actually starts? Well, I, again, yes, he did stand out to us at the Senior Bowl, and and uh, it was hey, there's a there's you know, there he is making another play. There he is making another play as you're watching the practices. And um, the one thing about being on the meetings with him and having um, you know some text conversations with him is is he, he's raring to go. He's ready to get here. He loves the game. He he, he can't wait to the day that uh, you know training camp starts. He's looking forward to that. And he's really sharp. He, again, another guy that's asking the right questions, that's detailed in the meetings. And so we're really excited about having him. And, uh, you know, he's going to have a role for us. If, if he's ready to go early, how would being able to use more 12 and 13 personnel change the offense and, and what you can do? Well, I think that, I think that um, really when you go back over the years for, and you look at our, our offense and what we've done is, is – you know, I think the 12 personnel and the 13 personnel, that, that's been a big part of our offense. So is, you know, 21 with a fullback on the field. So all those things have been a, a big part of our offense. It's, it seems like the NFL has kind of gradually gone towards maybe where it's, you know, 11 and having three receivers out there. But uh, we're able to do a lot of those things as well in 12. And, and uh, you know, the nice thing about being able to do some of the past stuff in the 12 game is, is you're also able to uh, run the football which we plan on doing when we're in 12 against maybe some nickel defenses. How does Josh Hill kind of play into that? Well, Josh is so versatile and, uh, you know, he's such a smart player. He's so dependable, you, you know, exactly what you're going to get from him. And so, you know, he's, he's a staple of this offense. And, and again, we're really excited about that, that room. It's, it's, uh, it's a room that, you know, is going to bring production for us. Pete, just going back to Jared Cook for a second, can you describe what it is that once you had him in the building, you really like about his skill set and his ability? Yeah, you know, again, prior to him us signing him in free agency, you know, you, you saw a lot of things that he did on film and, and really just a matter of making sure that we're put the success that he had, that we're doing those same things and making sure that uh, we're putting him in that those spots. And, and again, you know, it took us a while all of a sudden middle of the season we're, we're splitting him out by himself and he's kind of running some option type routes and he really had success and the other thing is is you know getting the ball in his hands and he's explosive when he catches the ball man he goes and and uh he's physical and so again it's just building on those things Peter, i feel like one of the kind of buzzwords in the nfl right now is like the positionless player um you guys may have brought some of that in with Taysom, but, but is, does Ty Montgomery kind of fit that as well? Um, where you could, you could use them in multiple ways. I, I think that that's the, that's the vision. And um, I, you know, you go back over the years and the halfbacks that we've been able to split out and, and play some receivers and some type empty sets or coming out of the backfield. Um, those guys have had success in our offense and, and the vision uh, is there. It's, it's, it's clear that he has that ability. If I can ask you, obviously, you know, much is made of the relationship, which rightfully so, between Sean and Drew. But, I mean, you even go back further with Drew, back years before to, to San Diego. Just maybe the evolution of your relationship. Are you, are you surprised it's lasted this long, that you've been able to coach one player for almost two decades now? I mean, do you ever kind of look from the, the big picture perspective of how rare that is in, you know, professional sports? It, it, it's, it's clearly rare. And, um, you know, just the, the fact that I've walked into the same building as, as him now for what will now start year 19, it, you know, for me, that's, that's special because I'm around a, a great person, a great leader. Um, 
a guy that you love coming to work with every day. And um, so I'm really, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm, I'm blessed. And, uh, you know, not many people get, probably get to say that in this, uh, in this business. The other thing I look at is, is, you know, the opportunity for my kids as well to be in one school system throughout their whole, you know, uh, time and, you know, starting in kindergarten and make it all the way through to, to college. So um, there's a lot of things that go with that. But again, um, I'm just, you know, I'm fortunate to be around Drew and, and uh, you know, he plays at such a high level and, uh, you know, maybe that's, that's helped me out. <laughs> uh, kind of following up on that, do you ever find yourself having to, you know, kind of slow down when you're explaining things because you've worked with Drew so long and Coach Payton that you guys kind of know where it would page each, each other's on that, when, you know, you bring somebody new like Emmanuel Sanders or Ty Montgomery into the offense, you have to slow it down a little bit? Yeah, and I think that, um, again, I think that uh, both Sean and Drew understand that there's a process to this. And um, the, the work on the field, you know, Drew is, he's tireless out there working with these guys. And, and he's always going to stay after practice to work to get it right. But again, yeah, I think that, um, you know, as we're going along, we got to make sure that we're not just throwing it all in there and, and, and we can't get bored because, um, you know, there's a progression to the teaching. And, and that's, Sean starts it over every year when we, when we build our installs. It's always by the time they get, they get to training camp. And again, we'll have the same process because we've had these virtual meetings by the time we get to training camp, they'll have heard this same install now going on the third time. Um, the thing that we just don't have is, is the reps on the field. And so, again, some of that we'll have to um, progress along. Pete, if there are no fans at the games and people can hear all your communication on the field, will that change anything for you guys? Will you guys have to change that more often? you got to protect against it? Well, I, I, we do pay attention to it. And, again, a lot of times – these plays that we're also talking about that we're maybe yelling out communication. There's also signals that we use. And, um, you know, they're, they're probably, as we're going through a season, signals may change too, because, because you're going to see that on, on, on the, you know, on the video to begin with. Um, so, I, you know, we'll pay attention to it. Um, but we've been doing what we've been doing for 14 years now. And, uh, um, you know, so we've been using some of the same signals again, We'll change them occasionally, but uh, I think that we'll, we'll be paying attention to that. Pete, we talked to Joel about this the other day, but how much do you think Alvin was, was limited by injury last year, uh, just with, with what he was normally able to do? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, you go back and, and you look at some of the early games in the season and there were some wild moments of him, you know, just – all of a sudden you're on the sidelines watching and you're thinking it's going to be second and eight and all of a sudden it's, it's another first down. And so um, I think there was some, some, obviously some limitations as to what he was able to do. But um, again, it, it'll set up for this year for him to be coming back hungry and ready to go. And then um, kind of sort of related, but uh, how long does it kind of really take to, to figure out the right rhythm when you're working two new backs in together it, like you know, Alvin and, and Mark had that thing going for a couple of years and then you bring a new player in like Latavius how, how long did it take to really kind of figure out how exactly to shift them in and out yeah I, I think that um you know it, it took us a, a little bit last year and then all of a sudden um you know Alvin was hurt and Latavius was 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 the role was the lead guy and obviously he, we had a lot of success with him and so I think that process will start early Right away, we know the two players. We know both what they can do. Uh, we feel good with either guy being out there. And so I think that process starts, starts right away for us. Uh, you, you mentioned Taysom when he comes in. The idea is for him to compete at quarterback. Is, is that the same thing for Tommy Stevens, or will he be more looked at at other positions and quarterback secondary? Well, I think this. I think that we see some of those similar skill sets. I'm not going to compare him to Taysom right now. But, again, we do see some of those – those skill sets. So I think early on he comes in, he's, he's, he's competing at the quarterback position as well. And then uh, an opportunity for us to, to maybe move him around and just, just to see what he can do and, you know, get him on special teams and see if he comes down and, and you know, how he covers the kick. So I think that, uh, again, the, the, the goal is to start him at the quarterback position, but it, um, we have to find out. And so he'll have an opportunity to do some of those things there as well. When you're looking at the 
the turnovers that Jameis had in his last year at, at uh, in Tampa, is that, is that stuff that, that you can kind of identify fixable, teachable stuff there uh, to help him eliminate that from the game? Yeah, I think the first thing I would say is, is that, um, you know, he, he recognizes it too as well. And so that's, that's the first step. And I think that, um, uh, again, in these meetings and, and listening to him and hearing him, you know, ask questions, he's obviously a very smart player. Um, but, but you go back and look at a lot of successful quarterbacks in this league, and, and Jameis is still young. He's 26 years old, and, and, you know, it took some guys that are successful in this league early in their careers weren't um, – maybe uh, didn't play as well as they, they, their capabilities. And, you know, it took Drew a couple of years to get going as well. So uh, we feel really good about having that player in the building. When, when you look at Jameis's uh, interceptions last year, as Sean has said before, you know, all of the factors that go into making a quarterback look good or bad. Um, can you give us a sense of how much of that is individual stuff or decision-making that you want to work on with him and how much of that was other breakdowns that you saw in film that may have had less to do with what he was thinking on that play than what someone else was doing? Right. I think, I think uh, with all the quarterbacks, you go back and you have an interception reel that you um, have time to look at during the off season and go back and kind of say, okay, which ones of these were maybe just a bad, you, you missed the target. Which one of these were bad decisions? Which one of these were you getting hit as you released? Which balls were tipped at the line of scrimmage? And, um, you kind of go back, you talk through those, and, uh, you know, they pushed the ball downfield there, and so obviously there was going to be some, you know, maybe a bigger risk on some certain plays, but I think that, uh, uh, you know, as we go through our system and, and we just, we, we detail the, or we get the details down, uh, we can feel like we can uh, make improvements there. How do you think it in Emmanuel Sanders and might help Traquan? maybe settle into a role where, where he can shine consistently? Well, I think this, I think uh, when you talk about Trey Kwan, you know, for him, he's done everything we've asked him. Um, he's done a great job for us blocking. He does a great job when we get the ball in his hands. And um, you, you look and you would say that he's really maybe not necessarily had the same amount of opportunities that um, maybe some of these other guys had, but, we feel like if we have those three guys on the field that, uh, you know, we'll have an opportunity to move the ball around, get guys involved. And, um, you know, whether Trey Quan ends up playing inside some and, and uh, Emmanuel outside or, you know, that vice versa, depending on the play and what, what scheme we're running, I do think you, uh, having Emmanuel bring some versatility to the way we can move guys around. Does anyone else have any questions? Yeah. I got, I got one more. You can go. Okay, cool. Uh, Pete, uh, just what has this been like for you uh, just as a, as a dad? Uh, just you know, you're not getting as much face-to-face -face time with, with, uh, with players, but um, maybe a little bit more time with your family. Uh, what has that kind of enabled you to do? Yeah, it, it's, it's really been great family time. It's funny because at some point when the offseason had started, I had, when we were still in the offices, I had gone in to talk to Dan Roshar one day and I was just like, you know, Dan, it, it hit me last night. I got two kids off in college. My other son's involved in baseball. By the time he gets home, he, you know, he showers, he eats, and then all of a sudden he's up in his room, you know, saying he's doing homework, maybe, maybe playing video games. But uh, uh, I was talking to Dan and, you know, he's got his third going off to college this year and just talking about, man, it, it felt like an empty house for a while. And all of a sudden now everybody's home. So it's, it's been, it's been great having them home. I got, uh, you know, my, my older son's home from college. He goes to college up at university of Illinois and it's been nice for my younger son because now the two of them, they're buddies, they hang out. They, uh, you know, they, they're out in the driveway, play basketball. They can, you know, go out in the batting cage. They do everything together. They fish together, whatever they, so that's been nice. It's probably been a little bit harder on my daughter cause she's, uh, Unlike me, she's very social and she likes to get out and about. So uh, it's been a little bit probably harder for her being home. But but her and my wife, you know, have, have found things to do. And, um, you know, they give me the two dogs. So those are my partners at the house. But uh, it, it's been it's been great having family time at nighttime. And, and you know, shoot, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a while since, uh, you know, we've had these family meals. And it seems like we're having those every night. 
Yeah, and the the question I had is kind of the same vein. Um, when Sean got sick, um, he said that you know have to protect all of the coaches, but especially you because of your diabetes. How have you have y'all talked about how you know you're going to continue to stay distance, especially when you know your health is of the utmost importance? Yeah, I think um, you know obviously right now at home. Uh, you know, the kids have paid attention to it. My wife's paid attention to it. So we, uh, again, we're, we're, we're really following the, the guidelines of social distancing and, and uh, those factors. But I really haven't had an opportunity uh, or we haven't really had that discussion yet as we probably wait a little bit longer before we have those discussions about work and going back and how that's all going to work out and just kind of see where we're at at that point. Um, instead of maybe trying to decide now and then a month later, maybe something changes. So, uh, again, well, it'll probably just be a matter of just being extra cautious. Great. I, th I think we're all set. Thanks for all your time this afternoon, Pete, and we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks. I appreciate all you guys. Thanks,